act like up what up king 2020 truth be told good morning share this right now share it share it share it right now if you ain't no hater you rock with me you have no reason to feel no kind of way share this right now share it right now go get started in one minute and i'm in and out of here good morning sabrina good morning queen Miss Yada Dada, good morning. Share this right now. Let me know that you shared it. Share it right now. I'm talking about get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. Y'all remember that movie, Get Out? Get out. I wish I had a light that I can uh, blink in your eyes, make you get out. Get out of your feelings. Shonda Lahore, good morning. Share this. We'll get started in 30 seconds. Good morning. Let me know if you shared this. Let me know if you shared this. Thank you, Yvonne, for sharing it. Thank you very much. Share this. This is going to help somebody. Share this right now. Going to get started in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All right, let's get, let's get it. Good morning. Listen, you got to get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. They have nothing to do with your faith. Everything I'm, I'm about to share with you right now, I learned from my father, my teacher, Dr. Michael Eady. If you don't know who my father is, you need to follow him. Um, he's on Instagram under Eady, E-A-D-D-Y dot Michael. Follow my father. Follow him on Facebook at Michael Eady, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-E-A-D-D-Y. You've got to follow my father, the greatest preacher, the greatest teacher I know, Dr. Michael Eady, pastor of People's Church of the Harvest, Church of God in Christ. Him and my mother, Lady Rose Eady, have taught me everything I know. And one of the greatest, all of them are great, but one of the most impactful teachings that he gave was that your feelings are liars. Someone needs to type that. Your feelings are liars. <laughs> if many of us got caught up in how we feel, we would never get anything done. We will be depressed all of our life. We will be afraid all of our life. We will be downtrodden all of our life. We will be sad all of our life. We will let our days waste due to things not going our way. But your feelings are liars. You got to get out of your feelings. You got to get out of there. That doesn't mean that you don't feel what you feel. You need to feel pain. You need to feel hurt. You need to feel disappointment. You need to feel sickness. You need to feel uh, 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 sadness. You need to feel uh, betrayal. You need to feel all those things. But don't reside there. Don't live there. Because they are liars. Because your feelings will tell you that things are not going to change. Your feelings will tell you that things are going to always be this way. Your feelings will tell you if it's not one thing, it's another. No. Your feelings are lying to you. That's why you have to get out of your feelings. After you feel it, don't dwell there. Learn from it. And then attack it. Sadness want to come on you because someone has betrayed you, lied to you, done you wrong, sabotaged you. Yeah, you're going to feel that. But don't dwell there. Make note of it. Learn from it. Allow it to teach you wisdom. And then go forward. Some of y'all are laying in disappointment you're wallowing in sadness and i'm not saying this as 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 if i have been a person that hasn't had challenges um overcoming my feelings because i'm a very emotional very passionate person so i have found myself in the past allowing something that negatively affected me for five minutes of my day to ruin the rest of the 24 hours of that day.
because I remained in that disappointment of that five minutes. I allowed it to impact me for the rest of the day. No, we're not letting that happen anymore. Your feelings are liars. I've used this example many times before. Imagine if you are in a place where you walk down a, a hallway and you get to a room and you don't know where the light switch is. It's not usually right by the door. That light switch is actually on the other side of the, of the room. Or you got to go to the middle of the room to pull the string for the light to come on. Your feelings could tell you all type of things. Your feelings could tell you that it's a, it's a, it's a nasty room. Uh, your feelings could tell you that there's a rat in the room. Your feelings could tell you there's a, 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 a someone hiding in the closet waiting to jump out and, and, and kidnap you. You, you could, you could allow your mind to, to play tricks on you. Your feelings will tell you that there's reason to fear. Your feelings will tell you that there's reason to be afraid. Your feelings will tell you that something bad is going to happen. And, and it feels very real. You can't, you can't dispute what you feel at the moment. And so as you enter into that room with all of these false beliefs that your, fit, that your real feelings are giving you to, to feel as if it's real, they are real all the way up until the point that you make it to the light switch. And when you turn the light on, what you come to find is that the room is not only pristine, but it's very clean. And that there isn't even a closet for anyone to hide in. That there aren't any rats in there. That there aren't any snakes in there. That there isn't anyone in there uh, waiting to hurt you. But those feelings were very real while the light was off. But the moment you made it to the light switch and you turned the switch on, all of those false feelings went away. Well, that's just an example. But it's very real in our everyday lives. You got some bad news and it feels as if that's what it's going to be forever. But no, once you are made aware of what it is, then your plan should be, I'm taking this to God right now. And God and the son, his son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are with me and they protect me. They comfort me. They guide me. They instruct me. So I have no reason to fear. That's why David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not even death, the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You have no reason to fear. Your feelings will lie to you. And fear and faith cannot dwell in the same place. How are you confident in God, but you're scared at the same time? Does it make sense? If you're going to worry, then don't talk to God about it. But if you talk to God about it, there's no reason for you, no, no reason, no need for you to worry. Your feelings will tell you that you're never going to find a job. That's not true. There are plenty of jobs out there question is what job do you want and if you don't see the one that you desire then you ask God to guide you lead you show you favor to identify the job that he has for you because God got work for you your feelings will tell you that this relationship is never gonna be what it should be well if both parties are willing to do the work it will be if, if both parties put God first, it will work out. But you're only responsible for you. And if you're with someone that doesn't want it to work, then you give it to God. And because God doesn't desire for you to be in a relationship with someone that doesn't want it to work, and you shouldn't want to be with someone that doesn't want it to work. Why are you fighting someone to see your value, to see your worth? No. It may not work with that person, but God got somebody for you, somebody better, better suited for you and better suited for them.
Yeah, your feelings will give you to believe I'm never going to kick this addiction. That's not true. The day you make up in your mind that you want nothing to have power over you other than the power of God and you put in the work and you stand in confidence with what God has said about you, everything's going to ch- going to change and you're going to have victory over that thing that once had victory over you. But your feelings will tell you you'll never kick this addiction. I don't care what it is. You'll kick it, whether it's drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, abuse, whatever it is. Get out of your feelings. Stand on faith. What is faith? Faith is, it is the substance, proof. Faith is the substance of things that we hope for. And the evidence, it proves things that you can't even see. Faith is, man, it's, it's, it's a most powerful, most powerful uh, uh, element in the earth. Faith. And faith is a principle. It's not a religion. Faith is belief. The truth within. Confidence without question. Some of y'all are showing, I, you don't even know, you're using faith right now. You're sitting in a chair that you didn't even think about. Did it have the capacity to hold your weight? He just sat down. That was faith. And you didn't fall. You're sitting on faith. You're sitting in faith. Some of you went to your car. You got in. Some of y'all got push start. Some of y'all got keys. You didn't question, is my car going to start? You didn't think my, my battery may have died overnight. No, you got in the car. You pressed that button. You turned the ignition and it started. That's faith. You didn't feel anything. You just believed. And so the same way that you use faith in those instances, you got to use it in your everyday life. Whether it's your marriage, your job, your family, your money, your health, your mental capacity. Doesn't matter what it is. You got to get out of your feelings and you got to focus on what has God said about me. And God has told you exactly who you are. You got to get out of your feelings. And stand on the word of God. For the word of God is our faith. He said in scripture. Said to Abraham. Did I not say it? Did I not promise it? Shall I not perform it? If I said it. It's what I said. Period. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said it, shall he not perform it? If God said it, he's going to perform it. And it's really already done. So I want to encourage you today. Get out of your feelings. That doesn't mean not to feel. That doesn't mean to ignore what you feel. It means don't dwell there. Don't live there. Don't stay there, especially in those bad feelings. You got to learn, like Paul said, I've learned how to be a base low and I've learned how to abound, how to be high. He said, I've learned how to be content in whatsoever state I'm in. When things are going great, don't get too high on the hog, stay even. Things going low, don't get too low, stay even. Don't get high, don't get low, stay even. Feelings will have you going up and down like on a roller coaster. But it doesn't matter how high you go. It doesn't matter how low you go. Just know that wherever you go, take the Lord along with you. All right. Get out of your feelings. Some of y'all need to release some people. The reason why you are angry every day is because you have not forgiven. Some of y'all need to forgive yourselves. The reason why you walk around depressed is because you know the things that you've done in the past that you are ashamed of, that you feel bad for. But you ask God to forgive you, but you haven't forgiven yourself yet. You got to forgive yourself. Get out of that feeling of guilt, shame, 
forgive yourself. Some folks have hurt you, betrayed you, lied on you, disrespected you, cheated you. Let it go. Get out of that feeling and walk in faith. That regardless of what has happened in the past, God has you. Stay focused on the word of God. Said, think on these things. Think on things that are lovely. Things that, th things that are beautiful. Things that bring you peace. Things that bring you joy. Focus on those things. And if you focus on those things, scripture says you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which is the pride of life. And everything that tantalizes our flesh. Oh yeah, it feel good. But most things that tantalize your flesh feels good for the moment. But the moment you're done, you feel guilt. You feel shame. You feel depleted. Your spirit, your soul cringes. You got to remember your flesh is your enemy. Bible says no good thing dwells in our flesh. Nothing good. You are not what you see. You are what's seen through what is being seen. This is not William Eady. This this flesh, that's not that's not William Eady. This nose, that's that's not William Eady. This is not William Eady. Who is William Eady is what is speaking through this. That's William Eady. What is looking through these eyes is William Eady. I am not a human being having a spiritual experience. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I am not from here. I am sent from and by God. And guess what? So are you. So are you. No, you're not from here. Bible says before I formed you, I knew you. And know in in the in the biblical uh, sense, the word uh, to know someone m means to be intimate with them. In scripture, it says, and Adam knew Eve, mean, meaning Adam became intimate with Eve, made love to Eve, became one with Eve. So using that same context, we understand that when God says, before I formed you, before I built you, created you, drew you out, gave you that nose, gave you those lips, gave you those hips, gave you those legs, gave you that chest. Gave you those breasts before I gave you that waistline, before I gave you those pretty eyes, before I gave you that grade of hair. Before I formed you, I made love to you. I became intimate with you. I became one with you. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. And he established it before the earth, before the earth was framed. Before he even said, let there be light, let there be a firmament, let there be this, let there be that. Before he created the earth, he knew you. Because he created the earth for you. That's the beautiful thing about God. He does, he prepares everything before he even brings you to it. So a lot of you are trying to figure it out. Where the song says, Jesus can work it out. It said, why are you trying to figure it out? He has already worked it out. That's just the type of God that we serve. And so understanding that, we shake off feelings of embarrassment. We shake off feelings of shame. We shake off feelings of depression. We shake off feelings of sadness. We shake off feelings of guilt. We shake off feelings of unforgiveness. We shake off feelings of pain and suffering. We shake it off. And after we shake it off, we exchange it. God said that he would change. He would take our spirit of sadness and give us the spirit of joy. He'll take your spirit of confusion and give you the spirit of peace. He'll even take your poverty 
take the spirit of poverty and place upon you the spirit of prosperity. Watch what you say about yourself because I promise each and every one of you that whatever you said about yourself has come to pass. So if you want to change it, change what you say about yourself. Rebuke every foul thing that you've said over yourself, consciously and subconsciously. And then declare only what you desire. Speak only what you want. Believe that what you say is going to come to pass and watch it happen. Get out of your feelings. It has nothing to do with your faith. Get out of your feelings. There's no money in there. Get out of your feelings. There's no love in there. Get out of your feelings. There's no hope in there. Get out of your feelings. There's no joy in there. But the scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You're stronger than you know. You're stronger than you think. You, you need to share this video. Not for me. Not for ego's sake. You need to share this video so that somebody can be set free on today. Let me close this out with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for every person that is viewing this right now. Thank you for every person that will share it. Thank you for every person that will see it. Father, we thank you that you give us to understand that our feelings are liars. And we stand in confidence and in faith on the word of God that never fails, but accomplishes every word that it has spoken. Thank you that we are walking into another round. Thank you, Father, that we are operating at another level. Thank you, Father, that we are no longer the tail, but we are the head. Thank you, Father, that we are no longer beneath, but we are above only. Thank you, Father, that our basket and our store, what's in our wallet and in our accounts is blessed. Thank you, Father, that we are healthy. Thank you, Father, that we are strong. Thank you, Father, that we are happy. Thank you, Father, that we have the joy of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you that you are strengthening us to know that although we may feel it, we don't have to dwell in it if it's not according to your word. This is the prayer that I pray in the name above every name, in the name that can't fail, won't fail, never has failed, but will always accomplish what he said in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. And the anointing on his life. In Jesus name do we pray. Amen. And it is so. If you believe that. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some thumbs up. Everyone should be typing. Get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. Get out of your feelings. Someone should be typing, I have been set free from my feelings. <clears throat> Someone should type, I have been set free from my feelings. Yeah. God is going to set you free. He's going to set your family free. He's going to set your friends free. He's going to set your associates free. God is sending freedom. To his people. I'm praying for y'all. I hope that y'all are praying for me. I love you. I care. And I'm excited. About your future. Bishop. Charles Blake. Said. I see you. In the future. And you look much better than you look right now. Somebody should type that. I see me in the future. And I look much better than I look right now. Some of y'all fine too. Guess what? You're going to look even better than what you're looking right now. I'm excited, man. I'm excited about your future. I can't wait to hear the testimony. 
of what God is doing over and over and over and over and over and over in your life. Somebody should type, I see me in the future and I look much better than I look right now. God bless y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.